Hi friends, welcome to interview questions and answers for Informatica Power Center at uh, project level. So we do have a lot of questions here and we will answer one by one and please see the video at the last and please subscribe and share. Please do the like. First we go, how many mappings have you created all together in your project? So you can tell like this, I did over 35 plus mappings, around 10 plus for our complex mappings. So next question, in which, in which account does your project fall? So you give your project uh, fall in the uh, insurance, uh, banking, like that. So like that, I am giving like this, oh, it's manufacturing and advanced services. What is your reporting hierarchy? So we do, we do have a maximum this kind of a hierarchy. Me and team lead, the project manager and the programming manager. Otherwise, me, AR and HR. Like that we will tell. How many complex mappings have you created? Could you please be the situation for which you have developed that complex mappings? I think eight, uh, one for character by character comparison with Informatica, not possible. So written 950 lines of uh, if single SQL code uh, and one for dynamical hierarchy distribution and uh, one for multi-byte characters means Japanese, Chinese characters. We have to, in, by using Unicode characters by using uh, uh, flat files, we will do this one and so on. Like that we will see, tell, and with the confidence we have to tell this one. What is your involvement in performance tuning of your project? Sometimes anyway, performance team will take care of uh, my code. Otherwise you tell, uh, we, we go for push down optimization and partitioning. So we have to tell best uh, thing is we go for the partitioning in that we are going for pass through partitioning. Most of them using for most of them are using in uh, projects uh, pass through partition only. We do have a lot of partitions round robin and uh, hash key hash key like that we are having. We tell one uh, we are using only mainly pass through partition. Okay, what is the schema of your project and why do you opt for the particular schema? Uh, some production. Uh, there is a source for us. That's why we are uh, taking scheme, that schema. For the production environment, we'll give the sum underscore production. For development, the dev schema we are having. Like that we are having. So what are your roles in this project? As a developer, designing the workflows, unit testing, and so on. So if we are as, uh, having uh, at the production side, uh, we, are, we will do the production support also. Uh, we, uh, we are in the L3 team. This we will discuss in the previous video. Like you go through that, you know how that uh, we will uh, support the project. Can I have one situation which you have adopted by which performance has improved dramatically? Yes, my first project. I faced performance issue after go live. Uh, so after going live, uh, we are getting a lot of issues, some a lot of bottlenecks, and uh, we are having reader threads, uh, writer threads, and uh, uh, transformation thread. This can be done. Uh, so by using the performance tuning in the project, uh, uh, by using uh, partitioning like that, we will tell again. All the uh, question and answers are related only. Were you involved? Uh, were you involved in more than two projects simultaneously? Of course, uh, I involved three projects at a time, uh, two projects at a time. If we are having five plus experience, uh, we go for the five, three plus uh, three projects involved at a time like that. Uh, two are Informatica, one is IACS, like that we will tell. Do you have any experience in the production support? So uh, for the small companies, a developer has to uh, give the support for uh, production support. Uh, we already discussed L1 and L3, L2, L3 support teams. Uh, 
so if you have any production knowledge you, uh, you tell us otherwise you simply say no what kinds of testing have you done on your project unit or integration or system or uat and uh, and enhancements were done after testing so unit testing and uh, sometimes integration uat will do, done by the business uh, not uh, bit okay uat will uh, will not do as a developer uat will done by business people only so user acceptance testing which is called as user acceptance testing so how many dimension table are there in your project and how are they linked to the fact table so in the current project we are having 18 dimension tables and two facts tables uh, and relationship will always be uh, dimension key so we have to keep in mind so in every dimension table uh, we are having primary keys and uh, that dimension table primary key will acts as a foreign key in the fact tables in the fact tables we are having uh, duplication of data so in the dimension table we don't have any duplication of data okay you have to keep in mind so we have to acd types in the dimension table so that uh, videos are there in our channel so please go through that and you know how it will be create and how what are the process and how it will change slowly okay we'll see that next how do we uh, do the fact load after dimension load complete only first we do the dimension tables and then we go for the fact tables so in that uh, loading we are having star schema snowflake schema we do have uh, this kind of schemas by using that uh, we will load in the star schema we are uh, having the dimension tables and uh, and in the middle we are having fact table so first we load this dimension table and we load again uh, after that uh, uh, loading this all dimension table we go for the uh, fact in the snowflake schema it is like i same like star schema but uh, the dimension table will like having another dimension table link like this we are having so it is called as snowflake schema how did you implement cdc in your project so this cdc uh, example also uh, we are having uh, in our videos you go through that the cdc change data capture cdc nothing but change data capture change data capture we have to keep in mind uh, it is always on source modification date so so whenever the new uh, file is coming uh, with the modified date then it go uh, and uh, store in the Uh, ods layer so from that ods layer to etl etl to etl will do to uh, etl is to do uh, and load it to the staging area so in the staging area uh, this is a truncate and load uh, there we can uh, go for the uh, change data capture with the date modifications so uh, we are having variables in that uh, we go we are doing that cdc with the variables workflow variable and uh, session variables we are having you go through you go to that video and you know how it uh, will change how does your mapping in file to load look like so first we are having source table and then we go having the ods this ods will contains only latest 10 days of data uh, then we go for the plat file uh, we are having the delimiter we with the delimiter we uh, You specify that with that we will go to the uh, we will load into the uh, uh, that is uh, staging area. How does your mapping in load to stage look like? This now we told now. So after the ODS two, it will go to the stage area. Okay. First we are having source here, source, and this is our ETL logic, and uh, so in between this we are having ODS layer. ods and this is here we are having a, a staging area uh, and after that core area uh, after that we are having uat user acceptance testing and last we are having and the last we are having uh, production sub production environment okay like that we are having 
so here we are having source uh, in this, uh, from the source in the source we are having XML files uh, and flat files and relational tables uh, COBOL files and all the files we are having from there to we have to shift to here ODS layer in that ODS layer we after the ODS layer the source qualifier will having uh, created date updated date uh, and all the timestamps will have with the timestamps we are uh, uh, CDC with the CDC uh, we are loading into the staging area this is a, uh, a, a truncate and load option which is a truncate and load option we will also call this, this is as a landing area what is this landing area okay we keep in mind and uh, this video also we are having go through that uh, next how does your mapping in stage 2 ODS look like? So, uh, stage 2 ODS is never possible. First, we are having a, a ODS layer, then we are going for staging layer. So, the question he will ask like this, and if he tells something wrong, uh, that will be, uh, he's, he, he thinks that we don't know anything. That's why we have to keep in mind the question how the he is question if we not understand the question uh, we tell come again please tell i am not understanding that question they will again ask then we give the slow slowly with the correct answers only how does your mapping in stage 2 ods so stage 2 ods is not possible it's never so what is the size of your data warehouse uh, nearly 40 terabytes we are having uh, data warehouse uh, our daily load is uh, uh, almost 1 million like that we will tell so which approach we are using top down or bottom up so uh, so normally we are using the bottom up so this bottom up approach is called kimball uh, we are having uh, uh, top down approach and uh, uh, bottom up uh, first top down is called as inmon model this is inmon model uh, we will having our data warehouse uh, video or uh, we go that you know what is inmon model and what is kimball model so kimball model so in the inmon model we are having first uh, uh, first we do uh, load the data into data warehouse and we uh, divide the data into data mods we divide the data into data mods dm1 dm2 like that uh, dm3 so like that we will send the data in the data mods so but in the we we are telling here the bottom up approach this is a kimball model so here we are uh, now we are loading the data from the source to directly to data marts uh, dm1 and uh, dm2 and dm3 so then again we are storing this all the data into data warehouse this is called as bottom up approach bottom up approach so first it is the initial cost is low and after that is uh, cost will increase so the differences also we are discussing in the earlier videos please go through that how do you access your source they are flat files or relational uh, relational and sometimes flat files also we will access the relational as well as the flat files so in the flat files you are having delimiters uh, depending on the delimiters so we are accessing uh, the delimiter values uh, and the relational we are having uh, oracle uh, directly we are using uh, from ods layer to staging area have you developed any stored procedure or triggers in this project how did you use them and in which situation so if you know about the stored procedure and triggers we will tell yes and uh, I, we then uh, otherwise we go just tell no i didn't use it uh, like that you tell if we know only we will tell us did your project go live what are the issues that you have faced while moving your project from the test environment to the production environment yeah i faced some issues uh, which issues are the quality testing issues we will face and we are unable to load some data uh, uh, we are getting the errors and this can be through the session logs we see how what the error we are getting reader thread or writer thread and some bottlenecks it takes much time we have to see here throughput value uh, the throughput value less or uh, more uh, like that uh, we will see all the issues we will face 
what is the biggest challenge that you encountered in this project so we are having dynamic hierarchy data distribution and moving the files from unix box to informatica directory through shell script uh, need to clean the data in flat file itself so these are the issues uh, we are facing so before telling the uh, issues we have to know the solution also so whatever i am giving uh, you have to get the solution for this and then you tell in the interview what is the scheduler tool you have used in this project how did you schedule jobs using it so by using the dollar universe uh, by using the dollar geo session task we can use the scheduler so otherwise you tell uc4 uh, scheduler autosys scheduler we are having a lot of schedulers uh, which in which area you are perfect you tell that scheduler name okay please uh, uh, subscribe and share uh, for more uh, videos and uh, go for the uh, previous videos then you get easily uh, this interview question and answers thank you please subscribe thank you thank you very much